some kind of there, there. One, it's like you don't even feel like you ate a donut when you right. eat one. So you have to have like three. I saw, this was a while ago, I saw somebody whose wedding cake was made out of Krispy Kreme donuts. Yeah. Oh, wow. That's serious. <laughs> well, good morning. As you can see, we're discussing donuts at Grimes and Glazes. Yes. And uh, we're waiting for y'all to pop in there. And uh, we have a nice little social group here this morning. So if you're not here, you're missing our uh, coffee and breakfast burritos and donuts and whatever else we can get our fingers on. And, Good food, good fellowship, good conversation. We'll, we'll get a little bit more good food, a good conversation. Good conversation. Oh, I'm sitting here. And hopefully, it'll be good fellowship. I'm thinking my laptop is a touch screen. Huh, huh. Yeah, I know. I've done that myself. Uh, well, why is mine not? Let's see. Coming in live. It's it's not pulling up on mine either. You bet. We got two people in there. I know, but mine hasn't shown anything. some issues right now. No, um, we're not. It's just Pastor. What, you're up? I'm up and I can hear myself, which is not good. Well, we are having some issues right now. <laughs> well, it's just me, so you're going to have to maintain. <laughs> I'm not going to be able to watch any comments, folks, So, uh, because the ones on this screen are too far away. I just got my eyes checked and I still would not be able to see those little... little words that are there um no don't don't put it i it's not gonna i'm still not gonna be able to look down he's trying to adjust his computer for me to see and it's just not gonna work um we are thankful for those who are here uh we're gonna have some uh time together uh hopefully some of you will begin uh considering doing this uh, i know uh, some of you have been missing wednesday bible study and uh we thought this would be a good opportunity uh, to have that same kind of vibe going again where we come for a little fellowship prior to, uh, then get into the Word, have some conversation, and, and again, encourage people to stay in fellowship or find a, find a, another place to, to fellowship together. So uh, we, we are beginning to make some of those moves to have more in-person gathering uh, and more times of uh, small groups fellowshipping together and relating with one another and uh, caring and concern. Uh, for the, for each other in our daily lives. So, do you have any other comments you want to make before we get going? No, I think just wish a few more people were here. Yeah, yeah. It'd be, it'd be it's fun being able to socialize a little exactly. bit. Exactly. It's like Sunday mornings when we're getting more and more people. And by the way, have you seen that more and more people are when when they come and gather, they're conversing with one another. We had to sort of remind them to go in the fellowship go in hall. The fellowship hall. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So let's begin with a word of prayer. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we give you thanks. Uh, we thank you for uh, our time together. We thank you for uh, those who have gathered with us uh, here in person, but also for those who are gathered with us virtually. Uh, we, we pray that you bless this time. We pray that you pour your Holy Spirit out upon us uh, to discern and to give us wisdom in your word, especially as we look at these texts for Good Friday. Uh, again, such an instrumental piece of our uh, faith journey. Uh, to know and to understand uh, what Christ has done for us. So, Heavenly Father, now uh, let us see your word come alive in our lives so that we may profess it to others. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, okay we're going to go to Isaiah 52. Uh, it begins at verse 13 and goes to 53.12. Right. Um, a lot of verses. We're covering a lot of verses today. I get the long verses today. I don't know how that happened. That's true. You get to read the psalm, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> all of it. <laughs> yeah, all of it. Um, well, but, yep. 
So Isaiah 52, 13, and through 53 to the end of it, which is 12. Right. And one of the things about uh, this particular uh, suffering servant uh, psalm, if you would, uh, you know, chapter breaks, like we start in chapter 52, you know, chapter breaks were not inspired, okay? Right. So it would have been a better break had this one actually started as verse 1 in chapter 52 instead of 52 and then going into 53. That would have been a better break point. Uh, but like I say, it's it's the fourth of the of the uh, four suffering uh, uh, servant psalms. Uh, Isaiah 42 uh, is the first one. Isaiah 49 is the second one, and Isaiah 50 is the third one. So, if you all wanted to go back and look into that, you could get all four suffering servant psalms, uh, or I, yeah, servant, whatever. Well, they, they, they are servant psalms. They, they, they are, are songs. They, they are. They really are. And, and for those of you that are acquainted with the Messiah, uh, we've got a couple pieces uh, from the Messiah that come from this portion of yes. Scripture. Yes. All right. Beginning at Isaiah chapter 52. Behold, my servant shall act wisely. He shall be high and lifted up and shall be exalted. As many were astonished at you, his appearance was so marred beyond human assemblance, and his form beyond that of children of mankind. So shall he sprinkle many nations. Kings shall shut their mouths because of him. For that which has been told them... They has see, not been told. Has not been told. They, they will see. And that which they have not heard, they will understand. Who has believed? What has he heard from us? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he grew before him like a young plant, like a root out of dry ground. He had no form or majesty that we should look at him, and no beauty that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. As one from whom men hide their faces, he was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him stricken and smitten by God and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that was brought that brought us peace. And with his wounds we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed, he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. Like a lamb that is led to the slaughter, like a sheep that is before its shears is silent, so he opened not his mouth. By oppression and judgment he was taken away. As for his generation, who considered that he was cut off and out of the land of the living, stricken, from the, stricken for the transgression of my people? And they made his grave with the wicked, with a rich man in his death, although he had no violence, and there was no deceit in his mouth. Yet it was the will of the Lord to crush him. He has put him to grief. When his soul makes an offering for guilt, he shall see his offspring. He shall prolong his days. The will of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. Out of the anguish of his soul, he shall see and be satisfied. By his knowledge shall the righteous one, my servant, make many to be acquainted, accounted to righteous, and he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore I will divide him a portion with the many, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he poured out his soul to death, and was numbered with the transgressors, yet he bore the sin of many, and makes intercession for the transgressors. Yeah. That was a long text. Well, and there's a lot there. I mean, if I was preaching a sermon on this, I you can't preach the whole text. No, you there, can't. There's just too much there. E even though even though there are some parallels, uh, but there's just so much there that is rich. Uh, again, that's why this is a servant song. Servant song. Uh, because because it is it, it it like songs do, like hymns do. They share a story, and and that's why you know when we have our hymns, it's always important to 
focus in on the words, especially if you don't like the tune and you don't like <laughs> how it's going. Focus on the words because they tell a story, just like this song does. Now, our hymns are prayers, and, and we need right. to realize that. Uh, one of the things that, in the commentaries I was reading, they refer to this as the Great Calvary Chapter. Okay. Okay. And, uh, and it was interesting to, to read further into their comments about this. Um, you know, in, in, in the Targum it reads uh, that, Behold my servant, the Messiah, which makes it even more pointed on verse 13. Mm. Behold my servant. Uh, that was interesting. Uh, and then I got to read further down there and I'm thinking, okay, how do the Jews handle this? And it says, Jews just reject this Isaiah chapter. They don't read it. They ignore it. They completely just overlook it. They don't. At one time, they said, oh, this, this was the suffering nation of Israel, but they couldn't relate that and make it where it actually related and made sense. So now they just ignore Isaiah 53 altogether. They just throw it out. And I'm thinking, well, okay, if that doesn't work for you, just let's just change the word of God. Well, and that's probably why 53.1 comes in. 53.1 comes in and asks the question, who has believed what he has heard from us? Because they know they're going to reject this. They're going to reject it, right? Yeah. yeah. You know, because again, and, 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 and that may be why they put the chapter break there, because 53.1 is a great transition from the words that, have, because the words that have gone before, you know, here's my servant, he'll, right. he'll be high and lifted up. And High and lifted up. Yes. Well, but, but what does a Jew think when they hear that? Well, they put think up on a pedestal. They think it's going to be the mighty warrior right. coming in. High and lifted up, be exalted. You know, that's that's yeah. you know the conquering king coming in. But then I'm sure they soured when it goes to 14. His appearance was so marred be, beyond human semblance. And I think you know, uh, right. if if you've seen Passion of the Christ, that movie, and 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 when you get to the point where he, he's getting beaten where he's tied to that post. Um, that really makes this, uh, his appearance was so marred beyond human semblance, especially when, when you see his face. Just, just does it, yeah. Just ripped apart, his back ripped apart. You know, it's bloodied, it's bruised, it's swollen. You know, and, and that's really a great description. You know, Mel Gibson did a good job of il illustrating that in the pic in the movie. You know, it, his form was beyond that of the children of mankind. He didn't look human anymore. He looked grotesque. Yeah, uh, like when Pilate said, "Behold the man." Mm -hmm. All right. You know, we start out with "Behold my servant," but you know, Pilate saying, "Behold the man." What's he look like? Well, and, and again, I'm glad you you mentioned that because that. The commentary I read would behold, see, see, look, 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 look at the servant, look at him, and and, right. and if you watch that movie, that's probably the scene that you turn away from, yeah. mm -hmm. where you're, you you just can't watch it anymore. Sure. You you can't watch it anymore because it, it 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 is so grotesque because you begin realizing oh, he took that on because of me. Yeah, yeah, and and yes, then you get to fifteen. So, shall he sprinkle many nations? Well, and we had that last week, that the sense of the blood being, the blood being, thrown, yeah. being thrown out uh, upon them. Right. And, and so that was part of the sacrificial process, as we saw last week. But, yeah. Uh, the blood be upon us and our, and our children, right? Right, right. Well, can you imagine, could, could you imagine being that close to Christ, where His blood splattered on you, uh, yeah, and that's why. That's why. <clears throat> pardon. Talk about purification. Oh right? yeah, yeah, exactly, sure. exactly. Well, you think about think about the uh, the, the waters of, on baptism. You know, and and the, and I think that's sort of a, a, an illustration of our practice of baptism is you're not dunked, you're sprinkled. So, so it's that, that it's that same imagery of the uh, sacrificial rite. You're being right. sprinkled with the blood of Jesus, like, just like sprinkled with water in baptism. Right. That was interesting. And then, of course, then we, when we get into the next chapter, in verse two, it talks about the young plant from dry ground. Yeah. Right. And refers to me. That was like when I started reading. I'm like, what is? It doesn't make sense. But it's referring to the Roman Empire. 
mm. coming out of dry ground. In other words, what growth is there in the Roman Empire? It's suppressed. It's it's no good. Uh, is it know. is it just the Roman Empire, or is well, it it's, or, it's, or is it the Jewish Temple now? Well, is yeah, dry ground. It's it's kind of both, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, yeah. You know. Uh, you know, and then when I got to verse three, it says, "We esteemed him not." I'm sorry, Linda. What? Yeah, yeah. The Jesse. The root of Jesse. Root yeah, of Jesse. Yeah, yes. Yeah, yes. That that should come. That should be right. mm -hmm. yeah. brought out. Yeah, yeah. You know, but it says we esteemed him not, and I'm thinking, okay, at what point of reference in the scripture does it say we esteemed him not? What happened to the disciples? Where were they all? Were they all there at the crucifixion? They were gone. You know, you got the two on the road to Emmaus. You know. I, I've got a point to make when we get to the gospel on that. Okay. So, you know, yeah. we got we got the two that are that have just fled Jerusalem. You know, and he comes and he says, "Hey, wake up! You know, let me open your eyes. Let me explain everything to you that I've been telling you during this whole time." You know, and and they finally their eyes are opened. And, but we esteem him not. They ran from him. They hid from and him. And the interesting thing is, if you look in front of that. As it starts, it, it, it narrows down the focus. It starts with he was despised and rejected by men, all of mankind. Oh. And, and then you get down, you know, a man of sorrows, acquainted with grief. Men hid their faces. Right. He was despised. And now, now it gets a little bit more personalized. We esteemed him. We Forget about the other men. We esteemed him. Right. We, we, we who claim to be believers esteemed him not. Are, are we ever ashamed? And we'll get into that as we read on this, yeah, these yeah. other lessons. You know, we ever do we ever just keep quiet about things and, and not share the gospel when we're called upon? Um, one of the things I wanted to get into and, and was in verse five. You know, it said he was crushed, and it's kind of like crushed doesn't mean a lot to me. But when I got into the definition of being crushed, it's it's bruised and being beat to pieces, humiliated, oppressed and smitten. And I'm thinking, okay, that goes back to, you're not going to recognize him. He's not going to look like a man. You right. Know, right. You know, he was crushed. You know, and, and of course, you know, and then you got his humility. He never opened his mouth. Right. He never said a word. Could he have stepped down off that cross at any time? Well, why did he pray what he did in the garden? You know, if you can take this cup from me, but not your will, not right. my will, but your will be done. I mean, that's, yeah. I mean, you know, he just obedient, humbled, and, you know. And we but really before, you, before you move on from there, I want to go back a little bit, because I, I'm surprised <laughs> you didn't catch this one. Uh, because you go at the end of verse 3, where it says, we esteemed him not, and then you get to verse 4, we esteemed him. <laughs> so which one is it? Did we esteem him not or did we esteem him? You know, because it goes from he was despised and we esteemed him not, then it's surely has borne our griefs and carried our star sorrows. Yet we esteemed him sm stricken, smitten, smitten by God and, and afflicted. afflicted. Yeah, uh, I was teased with Sally when we were... I, I picked out all the music for the worship for our wedding. Well, and, and, and I asked her, could, could I include this as one of the hymns for our wedding? Yeah, I don't think so. I, yes, that's what she told me. <laughs> I, I <laughs> but, really, but, but before you get I to really that. didn't want to get to that verse because I didn't like Smitten by God. And I was going to ask you if you wanted to discuss I, that. I, I, but I, I found what it is doing here is, yes, we esteemed him. We basically said, oh, what did you do? For God, to, this is a Jewish thing. Obviously, if you're going through some sort of punishment, what sin did you What commit? did you do to God? Right. That's that's prosperity gospel, folks. That's the other. That's the flip side of prosperity gospel. Prosperity gospel is what good do you do, and God blesses you. Well, what thing did you do where God is cursing you? And, and that's that's really the sense there is that again, this is pointing at us that. We're saying, well, what did he really do to get this? And, 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 and so, yes. But we also have to realize at the same time, 
Who's in control of all that? Who's in, who's in control of him receiving this? Well, God's in control right. of everything. So, but 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 again, it's, he's, it's he, just it's just right difficult for me. Well, but what happened on the cross? What was one of his prayers on the cross? My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? I, yeah, it's just a rough. It, I mean, it was God's plan. Right, and yeah. it is it is rough. Yeah. Will God turn his back on people in eternity? Is there a hell? There is. And there is a hell. You know, but, you know, they're the ones that turn their back to God. But the reality of it is, and, and I think this is where it's got to carry both things. We're saying, okay, what did you do to get God's punishment? But at the same time is, will God punish? Will God punish for unbelief? If he what if he didn't he wouldn't be a just God, and and what is he punishing Jesus for here? For me, for our unbelief. For me, and and it, should that be rough to hear? I hope so. <laughs> if it's not rough to hear, it doesn't convict us to to go back to him and say, God, I need you. Yeah, yeah. Well, and and then it follows up with six. All we like sheep have gone astray. <laughs> we're the ones that, that we're, are supposed to be we're, we're, receiving this. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So, but but yeah, we've gone astray. But the Lord has laid on Him the iniquity of us all. Right. He's He's carrying our sorrows, so He's being He's being He's receiving the the stricken, smitten, and afflicted because of my sin. And again, He was obedient to death. Right. It's just it, it's that question what would you do if, if somebody came in with a gun and well it's the uh, Casey Bernal um, at Columbine mm -hmm. if, if, if you know Are the you story of Columbine the you, where, where they said you know will you deny the Lord and she didn't and they shot her just okay right yeah Mm. What must the father have been? How that must have tortured him. I mean, and I'm putting human emotions, I'm tying human emotions to that, but I mean, that was his son. But Lisa, our emotions, we are made in the image of God. So we know he has those emotions, well, those he's feelings. He's merciful. And he's merciful and loving. And kind you know, and his, he, his, his emotions are perfect. And, and, and Lisa, down in verse 10 and 11, I sort of wrestled with that, with that same thinking, because it says, the will of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. Out of the anguish of his soul, he shall see and be satisfied. By his knowledge shall the righteous one, my servant, make many to be accounted righteous. When I saw out of the anguish of his soul, whose soul? Is it Jesus' soul or the Father's soul? Out of the anguish of his soul. Because it could very well be out of the anguish of his father's soul, he shall see and be satisfied. He 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 sees Christ. He sees, Christ. He sees Christ's obedience. Right. And, and and it satisfies him. It satisfies the punishment that needed to. And by his knowledge, by the father's knowledge, shall the righteous one, my servant, make many to be accounted righteous. I, and again, these are sometimes where these these verses are purposely left a little vague because you have to play with, okay, are they talking about Jesus here or are they talking about the Father? Because both of them can play play into that. But yeah, I that's that's where I wrestled with that section, exactly what you're saying is, not only in, in, in the gospel we're gonna get, not only Mary's anguish at the foot of the cross, because that's in the gospel reading, but the Father's anguish. Right. Yeah, yeah I think we need to you think so? Yeah. Well, you got the just the promise there at the end. He, the promise at the end. It was God's plan. Well, and, and that's where 11 and following come in is the father saw his obedience. The father saw what he did going all the way. And now the promise that we shall divide or Christ is dividing his portion. Right. He's, he's, he's the heir, but he calls us co-heirs. And so that... We're going to receive the blessing from the punishment he took on. Uh, 
All right. Moving where, on. Where did we say? John chapter John. 19. The gospel. Thank you. 17 through 30. I didn't bring my little notepad with me where I wrote it down. And Peggy, I see you're, uh, we hope that you're here next week. That would be wonderful. Okay, so, good, 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 yeah. good. Yeah, John, John 19, 17. verses 17 to 30. Yes. Except I'm going to read the last part of 16, okay. which goes into it. So John 19, 17 to 30. So they took Jesus and he went out bearing his own cross to the place called the place of the skull, which in Aramaic is called Golgotha. There they crucified him and with him two others, one on either side and Jesus between them. Pilate also wrote an inscription and put it on the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read this inscription for the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city and it was written in Aramaic, in Latin, and in Greek. So the chief priests of the Jews said to Pilate, do not write the king of the Jews, but rather this man said, I am the king of the Jews. Pilate answered, what I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his garments and divided them into four parts. One part for each soldier, also his tunic. But the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from top to bottom. So they said to one another, let us not tear it, but cast lots for it to see whose it shall be. This was to fulfill the scripture which says, they divided my garments among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. So the soldiers did these things. But standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciples whom he loved standing nearby, he said to his mother, woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, behold your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her to his own home. After this, Jesus, knowing that all was now finished, said to fulfill the scripture, I thirst. A jar full of sour wine stood there, so they put a sponge full of the sour wine on a hyssop branch and held it to his mouth. When Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, it is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Every time I read that on Good Friday, it's hard. it brings me to tears. It's hard. Especially it's reading hard. that word, it is finished. Now, I got to tell you, when I did the research on this, I, I, it, it, this, this one just threw me for a uh, I, I was like gone. Christian tradition generally places the tomb of Adam in Jerusalem under the place where Jesus was crucified. It's called the Cave of Treasures and described in the Syriac Book of Caves of Treasures. I have never heard that. But here we got Adam in the ground and, and Christ on the cross. And I'm like, that just... Uh, right, according to tradition. According to tradition, <laughs> right. yes. We gotta be careful there. And it was like... We gotta be careful. When I read that, I was like, what? That one I will not preach. <laughs> well, that's just tradition. <laughs> that, that, that that one I will not preach because of that reason, right? Yeah. Or it makes a good it picture. Ma it, it makes, makes a, a good, good picture. picture. I mean, you yeah. got fallen Adam and the perfect Christ. Yeah. You know. Well, and, and here we start right away in 17. We get that image of what, what Jesus told the disciples of what it means to be a disciple. If anyone deny your, after me. Deny yourself, mm -hmm. take up your cross, and follow me. Follow me. And... The, and, and He's, he's following his father. He's taking yeah, up his cross and following his father. Yeah. Uh, and then I like the description because it didn't just say that, that they, were, they were crucified together. That, you know, John gives the description. Right. And, and again, is this for the disciples to know? I don't know. But uh, they crucified him with two others, one on either side, Jesus between them. And you get, to me, the picture of James and John. When James and John asked what? Can I sit at the right and can I sit at the left? You really want to sit on the right and left side? Here's what it looks like. Here's what it looks like. <laughs> right? Here's what it looks like. Yeah, exactly. Well, I just, I thought about it as being sinful beings, okay? He's in the middle or in the thick of it. 
True. He's got sin yeah. on both sides of him, and he's taken on all our sin. Right. He's center stage. Right. Right. And you you can you, know? you can preach the sermon that way too. You very right? yes. Exactly. You know. Yep. Yep. Yeah. And and then you get the description. You know that the the Jews didn't like because they want you know in in fact I think one translation says instead of him saying uh, this man said this man claimed this to be claimed to be right right it, it was interesting to, to, to it, um, people just read it say it was written in all these languages why is it written in all these languages because everybody passing by going to Jerusalem is going to know. In, in, in their own language, this is the king of the Jews. And why would they be passing by into Jerusalem? It's Passover. It's the Passover. They're coming in. Right, right. They're going to be get them, get them down before Passover. It, it's sort of like Martin Luther. Why did Martin Luther post the ninety-five theses on the church door on October thirty-first? Because all the people were going to be going to church on November first, which is All Saints Day. Right. To do their veneration of the saints. And they're going to so say it. they were going, you know, even if it's a bad, a lapsed Catholic, they're going to go to the uh, 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 High, High Holy, Holy Feast Day. Day. Yes. Right, right. Yeah. And just like here, if it's a lapsed Jew, they're still going to go on a High Holy Feast Day. And so, you know, they wanted to make sure that everybody knew right. the reason for, for him yeah. being on the cross. You know, but and, and again, at the, at the scene at the cross, you know, we don't hear any mention of, of all the disciples, other than John. You know, and you, are, are we going to get to the garment thing first? Because I've got something. Okay, to, we'll get with the garments. Let's, let's do the garments first because I, I want okay. I want to talk about more on that. Okay. So hold hold that thought. Let's let's go to the garments again. And, and John is doing a great job of of fulfilling. Uh, of making sure that the people know that they were filling, fulfilling prophecy, and uh, so so we we see that throughout this section of, of the fulfillment of prophecy in this, uh, and and yes, they divided the the one garment into four, but the other one they didn't. Right. Well, you had the head, you had the belt. You had the tunic and then the undergarment. Right. So, but the larger garment, they wanted to, to, to rip. But why didn't they rip it? Because God said no. <laughs> Prophecy had to be fulfilled. Right. And, and, and I, and I, but, it, but again, I, I think God used human nature to fulfill his prophecy. Because it was a valuable garment. It was a valuable garment. It was a valuable garment, so it it would have lost its value if you ripped it in half. No, yeah, by the way, did you catch the description of that garment? It's without seam. Yeah, but did you catch the whole description of that garment? It was wo woven in one piece from top to bottom. Where else does that phrase, from top to bottom, play out? The, the curtain in the temple was ripped. when he dies was, was ripped from top to bottom so where his garment was kept whole what was not kept whole the curtain the curtain the separation of the holy of holies the the garment of christ was kept whole but the garment separating That preaches. If you, yes, if you just does. wanted to preach on the garments. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So now let's get to the the curiosity folks. The, the folks gathered around the cross. Right. Um, well, you got Mary and, 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 and you've got John. Well, and, and how, 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 many, how many people were there? I mean, as far as this description, how many people were there? All right. Well, you got the mother, his mother, sister. The wife and all right, so you got five women and one man, other than the guards. You 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 caught on to it. Most people would say there were three women and one man. But, but re, and this gets back to what you were saying about chapter. Mm -hmm. There are no commas in Greek. No, there's not. There's no commas in Greek. 
So how many women are there? Is it Jesus' mother? His mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clope? Clopas all is one? Or is it his mother's sister, Mary, and the wife of Clopas, which are three different women? <laughs> there, are no, there are no commas no in commas. Greek. There are so, no commas. Is it, so it, is it three people? Is it five? Is it three women? Is it five women? It, we don't know. Is his mother, sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas? We don't know. We, we don't know. Uh, but whether it's three or whether it's five, there are three or five women and how many men? One. Uh, again, signifying the importance of women in the ministry of Jesus. Right. Uh, because they are going to be the ones who will tell the st Because again, can the other disciples tell the story? They can, but they're not there, so they are going to have to go by what's told to them. By whom? By the women. <laughs> right. <laughs> but but the, other, the other thing that I saw in a commentary is if it is three, if it is just three women... You can't dispute it. It's well, three but, witnesses. Well, right. They're all named Mary. Wow. If, 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 there are three, if there are three women, they're all named Mary. Mary, the mother of Jesus. Mary, his mother's sister, the wife of Clopas. And Mary Magdalene. They're all ma named Mary. Okay. So that's just, an, I mean, that one's not a preaching thing. That's just a curious thing. Curious thing. But, but yes, it, it really shows the importance of women in right. the witness. Because, again, that happens at the resurrection, that it's the, the women who are going to be the first witnesses. Um, and so then we move on to just John, John's, little, John's little snippet of, of the final moments. Um, yeah. Now you, that, go ahead. ahead. Right. Did you pick up on the hyssop branch and the significance of that? I know, there, I know it is I was just, prophesied. Prophet. Well, right. It goes back to the Passover. Okay. They were to take a, a hyssop and dip it and put it on their mantle, on their doors. So that's so they use that to put the blood on put the, the doors. Put the blood on the okay. doors. Now you've got a hyssop, you know, dipped in in, in in vinegar, you know, and and I was like, okay, Jesus said, I'll never drink of the fruit of the vine again. Until I, drink I, it I was going to bring up that point because I was going to bring up that point because of last week's text. Okay. Yeah. And, and now you go with okay, wait a minute now. But there is a difference between the fruit of the vine and vinegar. Right. Okay. Vinegar is sour wine. It's 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 not good for anything really. Well, and I did I did find out it is good for something. Well, healing. And, well, it's good for quenching thirst. Oh, okay. They said it was good for quenching thirst. That typically the poor people, that's what they would drink. Okay. Because they couldn't afford the wine. They couldn't afford the wine. They couldn't afford the wine, okay. so they would drink the wine vinegar. Yes. Uh, vinegar I, was... I, 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 I would not want to do that. Yeah. No. No, vinegar was never referred to as the fruit of the vine. Fruit of the vine is a very sweet, by the way, very deep red wine. Mm. Okay. Over time, it will turn to vinegar. You're correct. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, the better the wine, it holds its age. The worse the wine, yes, <laughs> it does turn to vinegar. And if you've ever had wine that has turned, oh, it, oh, yeah, it's not good. Uh oh. And and, and yes, you 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 know you get to this point where it is finished, um, and 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 it's it's prefaced beforehand that Jesus knew it was finished. So before he spoke the words, he knew it was finished. Um, and, and so, you know, he, he and, I, and I think he took the, the wine vinegar, again, if it quenches the thirst, it gave him enough to speak that final word. It is finished. Um, you, we back on? Well, I don't think we were we were froze, so I'm not okay. sure exactly what happened there. Okay. Um, we're having technical issues today, folks. Yeah. But it looks good up here, right? Um, so hopefully you're still still on with us. Otherwise, you know, I'm sure because this probably is still recording. So right. no, it so is. it'll be on the recording. It'll be on the so yeah, so so he he finally realizes the time. It is finished. Uh, he bowed his head and gave up his spirit again. Who's right. in control? God. Yeah. 
and but it says he gave up his spirit right which you know which go ahead well I was gonna say at the point he says it is finished our sins were forgiven or not forgiven excuse me the debt was paid at that point right the debt was paid you know we now the resurrection you know fulfills everything but sin was paid for at the death on the cross right the resurrection just affirms the to resurrection us, seals the deal seals the deal yeah. it's it's the icing on the cake yeah. well and if he doesn't resurrect what it then then you know does it accomplish what it needs to and and then again who who does the resurrecting right uh and 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 again he gave up his spirit is the sense of obedience in that but the resurrection is by the hand of the father right jesus d doesn't resurrect himself it's the hand of the father that causes the resurrection to happen i, 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 I have a hard time separating the the trinity in all this it, it's difficult and you know because god did not die on the cross jesus did right and 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 jesus did not resurrect himself but the father, the father did. did and and that's where the difficulty with the doctrine of the trinity comes in is is and with jesus words i have i can lay down my life and i can take it up you know correct but but, but he's speaking as part of the trinity there so it's oh that's yeah, difficult anyway going into uh psalm let's let's do it okay probably spend the rest of the time just reading the psalm <laughs> uh, psalm 31 folks all of it <laughs> uh, psalm 31 you want me to read this so that it gives you a break so then you could read a short one at the end that would be wonderful thank you okay <laughs> that would I'll, be good. I'll read psalm 31 because he had the earlier long one i'll read psalm 31 because this is another long one and again, we're not going to be able to, to, to do justice on it because there's just so much there. But right. Psalm 31, the whole psalm, as Jack would say. <laughs> In you, O Lord, do I take refuge. Let me never be put to shame. In your righteousness, deliver me. Incline your ear to me. Rescue me speedily. Be a rock of refuge for me, a strong for fortress to save me. For you are my rock and my fortress. And for your name's sake, you lead me and guide me. You take me out of the net they have hidden for me. For you are my refuge. Into your hand I commit my spirit. You have redeemed me, O Lord, faithful God. I hate those who pay regard to worthless idols, but I trust in the Lord. I will rejoice and be glad in your steadfast love. Because you have seen my affliction, you have known the distress of my soul. And you have not delivered me into the hand of the enemy. You have set my feet in a broad place. Be gracious to me, O Lord, for I am in distress. My eye is wasted from grief, my soul and my body also. For my life is spent with sorrow and my years with sighing. My strength fails because of my iniquity and my bones waste away. Because of all my adversaries I have, because of all my adversaries I have become a reproach, especially to my neighbors and an object of dread to my acquaintances. Those who see me in the street flee from me. I have been forgotten like one who is dead. I have become like a broken vessel, for I hear the whispering of many, terror on every side, as they scheme together against me, as they plot to take my life. But I trust in you, O Lord. I say, you are my God. My times are in your hand. Rescue me from the hand of my enemies and from my persecutors. Make your face shine on your servant. Save me in your steadfast love. O Lord, let me not be put to shame, for I call upon you. Let the wicked be put to shame. Let them go silently to Sheol. Let the lying lips be mute, which speak insolently against the righteous in pride and contempt. Oh, how abundant is your goodness, which you have stored up for those who fear you and work for those who take refuge in you. In the sight of the children of mankind, in the cover of your presence, you hide them from the plots of men. You store them in your shelter from the strife of tongues. Blessed be the Lord, for he has wondrously shown his steadfast love to me when I was in a besieged city. I had said in my alarm, I am cut off from your sight. But you heard the voice of my pleas for mercy when I cried to you for help. 
Love the Lord, all you his, his saints. The Lord preserves the faithful and abundantly repays the one who acts in pride. Be strong and let your heart take courage, all you who wait for the Lord. Yes, as you hear that, and that's sort of why I wanted to read the the other two first. first. And then because you, you get all of this, okay, here's what Christ is saying on the cross. Right. You know, here's that prayer of Christ on the cross uh, in, in this. And, and so, yeah, there's a lot of imagery in, in Jesus in, in this. Yeah. Different translations uh, use different words here. But, right. Uh, in you, O oh Lord, I take refuge. In you, O oh Lord, is my trust. Mm. Okay. Let me never be put to to shame, or let me never be ashamed. In mm. King James, uh, you know, you know, don't let me be put to shame. Thinks of like it's referring to me. Like, don't let people mock me. You know, I don't let me be put to shame. But but the point is, is that is don't ever let me be ashamed. Ashamed of of who? The Lord. You know, don't let me be ashamed of the Lord. Because in you, I put my trust. You know, different different translations. Well, well and, and, but and, it's all the same. Right, right, right. And it helps us to, you know, again, this is the beauty about, you know, us, us doing these things together because we're seeing it, we're seeing from different directions. We're not seeing two different things. I was going to say that, but we're not seeing no. two different things, but we're seeing things from two different directions, two different directions. And, and the whole idea there, there also is what we read it, you know again crucifixion was a shaming act yeah it, it was a shaming act and, you, and 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 basically christ in his obedience you know his prayer is you know don't let me don't let me feel that shaming act in my life let let this be a witness right and, and a witness is never shaming uh because again if you ever feel shamed, it's because you've allowed the other person to have an impact on you. So who are you letting have an impact on you? God, who's, who you are following in this? Or are you listening to... Because again, they were, they were mocking him. Am I listening to others and feeling the shame? Then they're pushing my buttons exactly. instead of letting God push my buttons. So yeah, don't yeah. let me be ashamed of this because I know... Yes, this is this is a shaming act, but because I'm living in obedience to you, let me let me bask in your glory. Kind of like goes back to the, the foolishness of the cross, right? Okay, what exactly. We, we talked about earlier. Yeah, um, you know, and then you know, uh, I had to circle the word speedily because every time in Mark, immediately, immediately, yeah, I, I, and I said, okay, well, we, yeah, but be a rock for me. And, I, and that took me back to Christ and, uh, and Peter in that mm. conversation, you right. know, the rock. Uh, yeah, you know, be a rock of refuge for me. Uh, right, and, 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 and again, notice all these are, are placed in on who God is. On who God is. Because I'm going to experience things in my life that there's no, no reason for me to be able to get through them. But the only way I can get through them is by relying on the one who gets me through them. Right. And then I picked up on, on, on verse 3, you know, for you are my rock, my fortress, for your namesake, lead me and guide me. All I could think was was the 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, right. you know. Uh, and, and in our lesson of being challenged, you know, we, we talked about praying the 23rd Psalm. I guess that's just on my mind a lot uh, lately. But, uh, yeah. Yep. And then verse 5, you get the reference to what he said on what happened on the cross after it is finished. He bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, so yeah. you know, again, that is a very familiar phrase. But again, he's, he's trusting in God uh, that God, God will take care of him through this. Uh, and and you, you get so much of the imagery going on as the battle between the effect of the crucifixion on the body and and how it can affect the mind and the spirit right and and that again is what what I've been saying from the sermon a couple of weeks ago is yeah we pray for you know you know physical needs we pray for financial needs we pray for relational needs but underneath all of them is a spiritual need 
and, and likewise go, going here, you yeah. know, underneath the, the, the pain and the horror of the crucifixion, there's a spiritual need. And, that, and that's really where the psalmist is going here is, God, yeah, yeah, I, I know this is horrible, but you've got you got to uphold my spirit. Right. You've got to strengthen my spirit to, to, to do these things because he talks about in ten. What well, actually it starts in nine. My eye is wasted with grief. My soul and my body also. My life is spent right. with sorrow. My my years with sighing. My strength fails. My bones waste away. So <laughs> that's all physical. Right. You know, and, it, and it's and, it, and it's. It, but again, it comes back to. But I trust in you, O oh Lord. Yeah. You yeah. are my God. I yeah. mean, yeah. I mean, you know, and, and I just hear those words: "My God, my God, right. why have you forsaken me?" You are my God, and that's the and that's that spiritual battle. That's where Satan is trying to get, get in the head, get in his head, which then gets into his heart, right. because he's already gotten to him physically. So, and and that distance from here to here. From head to heart is a long way. It's a long way. Uh, you know. And 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 with Christ, he didn't. He, there there was no way he was going to, you know, go down that path. And then again, we get down there. You know, oh Lord, let me not be put to shame. Yeah. I call on you. Let the wicked be put to shame. Right. Let them go silently to Sheol. Sheol. Uh, you know. Uh, let the let the lying lips be mute. You right. know, I mean, it's like, here's the truth, listen to it, and, and throw this other stuff out in the trash where it goes. Yeah. Well, and, and, and really, that, that whole section 9 going all the way down to 18 is that that's where the spirit is wrestling. You know, right. because again, I've been forgotten, uh, become broken, uh, I hear the whispering of many. Uh, and then the ones that you just pointed out there, you know, do something to these, do something to these people. Yeah. Like, but then you get 19. Yeah. Oh, how abundant is your goodness. He's on the cross. Right. Oh, how abundant is your goodness. Yeah. <laughs> Better him than me, because I, I couldn't, I mean, in my, oh well. Right, better him than you because guess what? Well, I'm in pain and suffering. You, I'm a miserable person. You you wouldn't have been able to do it. No, no. So it is better yeah. him than us yeah. because well, I didn't mean it that way, but yes, that's correct. <laughs> I'm just saying that you know when I'm when I'm in pain, you and ain't suffering, my savior. <laughs> I'm, I'm not a nice person, you know. So yeah, I wasn't feeling too nice yesterday either. Yeah, <laughs> so, but but yeah, how abundant is your goodness? You know. And it, and it does get revealed to us. 21, he has wondrously shown his steadfast love to me. Yes, this is Christ on the cross. But again, I, I think, and, and, and this is why I wanted to read this here, is don't only think Christ in this psalm. We've got to think of ourselves. Right. Good. Ourselves in obedience to the Father. These are our, because again, what, he, what did he tell the disciple on how to be a disciple? Deny yourself. Take up your cross. Follow me. The path is not going to be easy. These same things that he is feeling, we're going to experience. We're going to experience that physical pain. We are going to experience all the mind stuff, especially when people are saying things to us that we're all wrong. Uh, but don't let, it, don't let it seep down into your heart. And I think rely on these promises. Verse 21 really kind of, it relates to Christ, but it definitely relates to me. Blessed be the Lord, for he has wondrously shown his steadfast love to me when I was in a besieged city. You know, I'm thinking, okay, besieged city, how do you relate that? You know, we are not of this world. Right. Okay? We are, you know, we are not of this world. So wherever we're at, whatever we do, you know, there's sin all around us. Right. You know, and, 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 and Satan is just having a heyday. And so, yeah, I am definitely in a besieged city. But God still shows his steadfast love to me. And not just, most importantly, but not just in Christ and what Christ has done, but just in the everyday of giving me breath and health and, and, and the ability to just see his wonderful creation 
And, and, and the question comes, because I, I, I know I've heard that, is, is our city more besieged today than it was 20 years ago? Be it, careful. It, it seems like it is, but no, because sin is sin, okay? Right. All right. right. Uh, I used to say, when we came up from South Florida, I got out of the forest fire, and I've got a little sprinkles here and there, campfires, <laughs> okay? <laughs> the fact is, sin is here, just right. as it was there. Right. It just, it seems more rapid there, so like where people are just enjoying it more and, and living their life. Uh, I definitely feel a blessing at this place. Uh, more fellowship of Christian people, right? Where they live their faith uh, more openly. Uh, but yeah, no, it's it's just as bad then as it is now. Exactly. We've so. we've been besieged every day, of it. and and the reality of it is, is it, it appears to be more besieged because in our faith we we recognize and we see the sinfulness around us more than what we used to. Right. And yeah. And we see more and more on the news because that's what people want to hear, how bad it is. That makes the news. Well, you know. or, or people don't see that as bad. Yeah. Because we see, I mean, that's, if, if you haven't heard uh, on the news about this Equality Act that they've passed through uh, the House that needs to go to the Senate, and what happens is with some people's perspective of the truth, they see, and, and this is good Lutheran theology, they see evil as good and good as evil. evil. Right. You know, so, so that which that which they see as evil, those of us who are believers, that, that we take certain stances on things, you know, you know, they, 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 they think we are. You know, so, so so that which we call good, they see as evil, and that which we see as evil, they're calling good. And and and, and what's the Lord say about that? Love the oh wait a minute. Love the Lord, all you saints. The Lord preserves the faithful, but abundantly repays the one who acts in pride. Right. And, and, what, and what is pride? Your favorite thing. Oh yeah, me, myself, and I. Exactly. But it's going to be it's God's my time, truth. not it's mine. It's my truth. It's God's time, not mine. Okay, we're going to run a little over today because That's we're right. going to move to the uh, sermon text, which is the epistle in Hebrews chapter 4. And I get a little break here today. I get the short yeah, verse. Yeah, you get the short verse. Hebrews uh -huh. chapter 4, verses 14, we pick up. And we go through... Uh, 14 to 16, and then chapter 5, 7 to 9. So we got a little s split there. A little split. Since then, <clears throat> since then that we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast to our confession. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weakness, but one who in every respect has been tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us then have confidence and draw near to the throne of grace that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in time of need. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to him who was able to save him from death and he was heard because of his reverence. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered. And being made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation to all who obey him. Those are just great words. I, mean, I just, I feel a peace when I read that. It's like, okay, God, you did it. I couldn't do it. And you just lift me up here. And, and knowing different than a high priest and what they had in the temple, why? Because he passed through the heavens. You know, you had the Pharisees but, and the Sadducees. And, 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 and pick up on that imagery because I, I talked yeah. about it earlier. Passing through the heavens would, would be the imagery of what? In, in, in the temple. Oh, 
the tearing of the, it, it's all open now. Right, it's, it's right. wide open. It's the, it's the passing right. through the curtain. Yeah, yeah. that's a, he's so, our so gateway. He, he passed through the curtain, he passed into heavens, which opened it all up for us. You know, yeah. He's the gateway, he's the gateway between heaven and earth. Right. No other, no other way, to, to, you know, than, than through Christ. Uh, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And this is going to be a, 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 a I wrote, a, I, I spent my day yesterday, I wrote three sermons in one day. I can't believe, see when I don't feel good, I can't concentrate. It was, it was, yeah, I, yeah. It, God used the time. That's God good. used the time, because I, 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 wrote, I wrote this Sunday sermon, I wrote um, Monday, Thursday, and Good Friday, all yesterday. The interesting thing about this, this sermon is you won't hear much of conviction of our sin. Usually, usually with my sermon, there's a section I'm where say, you do a little bit of law first, and, and, and right, right. The, 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 yeah, I'm hoping just the realization of Christ on the cross is enough to convict. You know, um, but but again, I, I'm playing with the imagery of him being the high priest and the sacrifice. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, so I'm really playing on on his high priestly role, uh, going through the curtain. You know that that's really where where the gospel comes in for me is that he he has he, he not only sacrificed but he's gone through the curtain. You know it, it's it's you know it's not just that he died right, but but as he died he you know that that was his movement to sitting at the right hand of God, uh, and now he intercedes and that's the beauty is now he intercedes for us at that place. But he intercedes but. But he understands what we went through. Right. Okay. Yeah, he was he was tempted by the devil. We know that it's written in scripture. I'm sure there was frustration in his life, and I'm sure there was times you, you he was think? hungry. He you know? had to deal with Peter. You know, <laughs> I have to I have to deal with you. Oh, uh, I called me a blessing. <laughs> <laughs> Oh boy, sorry, Lord. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, uh, I mean, we do. I mean, the, the frustration, the hunger, you know, being tempted. Right. Know, the Lord dealt with it all. I mean, it, you know, I always say He was angry, you know, in, in the temple, you know, driving out the money changers. It was a righteous anger. It was. It was like this is what the temple is for. Is for prayer. You know, not not for changing money and cheating people. And, and taking advantage. Right. Uh, well, and, and again, I, you know, I know you're playing on off of 15, but I, I you know, I, I was one. Yeah, you know, I, I didn't really. Well, I, I do play with it some. Um, we have a high priest. We do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize, sympathize with our weaknesses. Correct. Which, which, you know, as you're saying, okay, well, how did how did those high priests act toward the the people back in those because okay, they, they, they they had to make the they had to make the sacrifice they had to take the sacrifice and make the sacrifice drain the blood and all they had to do that but it seemed it, it would seem to me based on that sentences they were fulfilling the service for the people but they weren't relating to the people well they would it, it, if you read scripture they would go to the marketplace they didn't socialize they would go and make long prayers Right, and and do things of righteous acts right. to 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 have themselves lifted up, which even further separated them from the people. Right, you know, right. don't touch me. You're unclean. I'll have to go through this whole ritual of, of you know, washing and and, and being made pure again. Uh, so yeah, you you got that. But here you've got you know Jesus, you know, among us, becoming the high priest, but in a high priest that he walked through the streets. You know, he, he people touched him. He right, touched right. Him. You, you get that woman with the issue of blood for twelve years. Exactly. And, exactly. You know, and and he knew right away that the power had gone out from him. He didn't. You know, he didn't chastise her because she had done what she had done. Right. He, you know, he understood and he showed mercy and love. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Well, and and you know, and this is really where I play. You know, he's a great high priest. He's not like the other high priests who sort of kept their distance, but he experienced everything we did, except without, except for, for the sin. He was without sin. But then, you know, that whole sense of he's he's passed through the heavens. He's passed through the curtain. 
let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace. Now we can draw near. Exactly. We can draw near to the throne of grace because he has for us. And we're going to find, we're going to have mercy and find that grace. Right. You know, he's right there. I mean, you know, he he walked through the streets. He he tore the temple through. I mean. Right. Yeah. And, and, and so, yes, he offered up prayers and supplication with loud cries and tears. Yes, that should, again, what I said a couple weeks ago, that those seven phrases of Jesus were seven prayers. Mm-hmm. Those were offered up with loud cries and tears. Uh, ultimately, that he learned obedience through what he suffered. Right. That's what we do. We learn obedience. We learn the will of God yeah. by what we suffer. I mean, he would go off early in the morning in a quiet place and pray. Right. You start the day, end the day. I mean, it was always with prayer, a constant communication with the Father. That was our example. And, and I forgot to check this, but in verse 9, and being made perfect, okay. I, I think it parallels with it is finished. Okay. You know, that, that, that sense of act of being completed. We'll see. Ra- yeah. Rather than just perfection, but something being completed. Uh, again, I, I, I did some prep on this a few weeks ago. I just wrote it yesterday, but I did okay. my prep on it a few weeks ago. But I, I think I think if I remember that, that that can be translated instead of just and being made perfect and being made complete. Okay. Because see, when I when I read into that, I had made notes that Jesus was the way, the truth, and the life. Right. He, and that's it because of his perfection. Well, and it completes that path. And he became that source. Right, it, it, and, and he completed that path for us to, in order to to approach the throne, right. but also to enter into heaven. So he completed it. Yeah, so that that would yeah. that would connect with it. Anything else? Uh, I think, we, actually, we didn't go that far over. We didn't go that far over, but we probably could have gone for about another half an hour. Well, we had some more there, but, we, but that's okay, you know. God led us through it. And we, yeah. you know. So next week, if you want to join us, 9.30, uh, like the group did this week, 9.30, come for coffee, donut, breakfast, burrito, sausage and gravy. Sausage. Not all of it. Biscuit and Not- gravy. Come on now. <laughs> all right, sausage gravy. Sausage gravy. <laughs> right. Right, biscuit, biscuit with sausage gravy. Yeah. Don't, don't come and eat all of that. Uh, n- number one, it can only clog, all that could clog your arteries. <laughs> but some of it is good. Uh, it is very good. Um, so please join us 9.30 for, for some fellowship and, and some discussion. And then, you know, 10 o'clock as we move through the lessons and uh, we can enjoy each other's company and fellowship. Let's close with a word of prayer. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we give you thanks. We thank you for uh, this time together, the time of fellowship, both in person and virtually and and we just thank you for your word being lifted up to us, especially this word focused on, on our lessons for Good Friday. And, and just prepare our hearts for that, for that worship uh, when it arrives in a few weeks. And, and so just being, uh, rem- being mindful of the importance of the cross uh, to prepare us then for the celebration of the resurrection. Now uh, continue to uh, lead us and shape us for our witness to the world this day and every day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And so as we conclude, let us go and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.